Hey there, fellows. We have made a bunch of lightweight engine parts over the years, out of drink cans and what have you. And so right here I have got a crankshaft and a lightweight chunk of Duralumin. Perhaps we should try making us an aluminum crank. I definitely think we should, so let's do this. And let's see how much this weighs. Oh wow. What's up? Oh, what? Nothing much, but the pan... So you're trying to say that Sergei gone end up... We make a custom Duralumin crankshaft. Translation and voiceover by Be My Russian. Check this out, guys. Here's the aluminum crankshaft. This is how far we've gotten with it. Now, with the bearings being made out of a soft material, and since aluminum is also fairly soft, despite there even being an oil film, well... We suspected that pairing two soft materials together wouldn't work all that well. One was bound to wrap around the other. And so we reached out to some friends of ours for them to think of something. And here's what they've come up with. They have applied a really hard ceramic coating. They immerse parts into an enormous tub with a solvent. There's some plating and high voltage involved. The high voltage results in one material fusing with the other. One sort of even embeds itself into the other. And now we can be sure that the bearings will be able to work with no issues. Now, the finish is a bit on the rough side, meaning that we still need to do a bit of machining. So, let's get to work on that. So I've got me this scale with an electronic readout. It gives you a precise measurement. And let's see how much this weighs. A bit over 10 kilograms, terrific. Put it back down here. Hook up the aluminum one and see how much it weighs. It should be way lighter. I can easily lift it like this. How much? 4,750 grams. 4.7, that is a serious difference. 10 and 4.7. That's pretty much a difference of twofold. So look here, this is all going very well. The aluminum crank is seated, it turns over and that is a very good thing. So we got that installed, now we need to get the covers and the accessories on, fit the engine to a car, start it, and see how it behaves. Now we've also decided, uh, since we got an aluminum crankshaft, we also decided to fit an aluminum flywheel. It's a good thing we have one. Okay, continue assembly, fit the engine to a car and try it out, let's go. Oh, you fitted the singing starter motor. We have only got one that sings. 
While we do have the aluminum flywheel on, they might not be a perfect match. And with the crank not quite being the right size, we fitted some washers on the gearbox side to move the gearbox away from the engine. I see, right. Yeah, I get it. So you're trying to say that Sergei gone in the... Where you got the semi-rings, the diameter is wrong, and so there is interference. Second mistake, the lock tab was 180 degrees off relative to where it's supposed to be. Number three, and this isn't even necessarily a mistake. Where the input shaft connects with the bearing, that spot could have been set a bit deeper in, to avoid it coming into contact with the crank. Do you understand what these people are on about? I don't. Is it going to hold up, though? Why wouldn't it? It'll likely stay in one piece. The big question is how the journal is going to behave. They should be fine, they've got the ceramic coating. For the long term, you'd want that coating to be way thicker than it is right now. Well, in that case, the crank has to be undersized. Or the coating to compensate the rest. No, I think it should be the right size. Yeah, machine down to the right size. The coating seeps into the metal. Oh, so it doesn't increase the size? It does not. But why? Oh, yeah, right. Maybe grind that down. It's got this weird thing going on with the outer layer. All right, everything is in place. We are looking good. Some finishing touches and let's try starting it. Why is it so quiet? Holy cow! Will you take a look at that? It started, it ran nicely... ...and quietly, which was the most amazing thing. It is truly shocking how quiet this engine is. Let's do some fine-tuning and go for a drive, then. Crucially, it started, it ran. The crank with the flywheel don't weigh all that much, so we might want to increase the idle. It won't want to run at low revs with the lack of inertia. But I'm curious as to how this is going to drive. So let's dial all of this in and head out. I guess we'd better... I wanted to say head out and uh, yum. We definitely want to do that. And here we are, nicely moving along. But the thing that is amazing me the most so far would be the fact that the engine is operating very quietly. Like, it is so quiet. Will a regular old crankshaft really make for so much noise? But why? Does it give you a sort of bell effect or something? With the impacts resonating all throughout the engine. Through the engine block for us to clearly hear. But right now? I really like how this engine is operating. This is just super pleasant. The way that it builds revs. The slightest input and it accelerates well. The engine is still cold. It obviously won't accelerate as well as when it's warm. And that's why I'm taking it easy, I need to warm it up. I want to know how it's actually going to drive. Somebody jinxed it. No, that was me apparently. I let off the gas too abruptly and stalled the car. And it immediately stopped in its tracks. The crank and the flywheel are very light. They have no inertia to keep the whole thing rotating. And the engine just stops. Let me try... And try I did. Revved it out and so far so good. Out onto the street. Oh, wow! 
And a bit of wheel spin in second. What just happened? Why doesn't it want to run? And what's with the torque dips? That's it? Come on. Oh, I was wrong, it's not over yet. Something tells me that this is a simple case of, I mean... Potentially, the crank is heating up and expanding. But the clearances are really slim. Like, very... It started, that's nice. And it's quick to cool off. It cools off, and off we go. I can hear a bad noise. Really? So it was only good for one kilometer? It's just a rumble for now. But if previous experiments are anything to go by, this will crack the engine open very soon. We have lost a lot of engine blocks lately. Like, more than a few. Seized? Yep. Abruptly? Uh-huh. Do you hear the knock? Yeah, I heard it when you were still around the corner. When I was coming around the corner? So apparently this is why they don't make aluminum crankshafts. It does accelerate pretty nice, though. But why is it... And the engine is seized. Come on, man. Which part of it expands so much? It'd have to be the crankshaft, as there aren't really many alternatives. It expands considerably. Let's give it a turn. Didn't I tell you it wouldn't turn? But it's trying to tear it down already. I will, but it's right about to... It won't tear it apart. Let me try one more time. Nothing's gonna happen. Oh, wow. What's up? Oh, what? Nothing much, but the pan... That looks nice. Look at the oil dripping. Do you see that chunk swimming in there? There are lots of them. That just looks great. Oh yeah. That is thrashed. Oh my. So look here guys. It's all looking very good. So an aluminum crankshaft is a good thing and all of that. The engine is happy to rev, it operates quietly. But there is one issue. The coating we applied to the crank, it came into conflict with the bearing material, and they started eating away at each other so badly that a couple of the journals, it's not even just a couple, or maybe it is, or three anyway, they are in horrible condition. They are chewed up. This might be the result of thermal expansion, I mean, we did leave a bit of clearance, but aluminum expands considerably. And so there's your reason. Those are the results, and the engine was on the verge of seizing. You can plainly see why that's the case. So this worked alright, but it didn't last long.
And that's all I got for you. Subscribe to catch future experiments, and catch you later.